You're listening to the world famous White Roof Radio, episode number 619, recorded April 5th, 2017. Tonight, brought to you by MotoringStripes.com, CravenSpeed.com, and now Motoring.com. Mini performance, speed, and style, it's on Motoring.com. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's DB in Arizona coming at you with a brand new, brand new episode of the world famous White Roof Radio. We are talking about Mini Coopers and things of that sort like we like to do. Um, joining us this week, as always, my good friend, Mr. Todd Pearson, motoringstripes.com. Todd, say hello. Hello. Oh, good. Todd's here. Good. Excellent. Alex is here. Hello, hello. Uh, hello. The good reverend. Please. No, no, Alex, that's all you get. You just get hello, hello. Uh, the good all reverend, right. Mr. Chad Miller from Detroit Toon, DetroitToon.com has joined us. Hello. And, uh, our man on the, our man in the, our man with the plan, Brian Dallas from Ride Bikes Radio. He's here as well, Brian. Hello. Okay, that was just weird. <laughs> Are you trying to outdo my deep voice? <laughs> Maybe. It's not gonna work, dude. Anyway. All right, I'll go for high pitch then. <laughs> <laughs> don't do, don't do that either, because then now you say that now Todd's gonna start messing with the settings on his mixer and he's gonna make us all sound really boomy. Anyway, we Wait, are, I, I could do something though. Funny. I don't, I don't know, know if that'll actually work tonight because I'm because I'm recording. Yeah. As soon as you, as soon as you said boomy, I thought of uh, Gabe's theme song. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you're inserted, Todd. Yes, that is where Gabe's theme song would go. Except Gabe's not here, so we don't want anybody to think that we have Gabe by playing his theme music. Uh, we could, though, because I have it. Or is he? Let's hear it. This has is been he... a test of the Gabe Bridger reporting system. Had Gabe Bridger <laughs> actually been on the show, you would have... I wonder if any USA plays the music when he gets to one of the press rooms. <laughs> <laughs> we, unfortunately, like, we don't know because we don't get invited to this press I'm gonna, Oh, I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't even know we're talking about him right now because he doesn't even listen to the show. I'm going to send that sound file to Pat McKenna. So you should totally send it to Pat <laughs> so that anytime <laughs> they talk about motor I, file or Gabe, they just have that music playing. Because DB I got $20 attest- cash if somebody will do it. DB can attest to this, that um, that is the ringtone when Gabe calls me on my phone. That is correct. That, that is correct. That is, that is my yep. phone rings is with that. Yeah, that dude. That's funny. You should totally do that. Okay, so uh, we're done picking on game. This is the the picking on Gabe portion of the show, and it is now ended. So we are going to move on. Uh, for those of you who are playing the White Radio home game, uh, you know that you know already that I have a new Mini Cooper. We are going to talk about that. Our man Brian has been completely and totally nerding out on the Countryman uh, PHEV, or the, the electric one. Uh, he's been reading, like, stacks and stacks and stacks of these papers, and he's got them, like, all crammed into the brain. And he's going to give us, like, a little crash course lesson in the electric Countryman, which is going to be pretty badass. Uh, Chad wants to talk about why Mini Cooper parts are getting so expensive. I thought that was pretty rad. And anything else that we can think of. All that, plus, you know, like I said, anything else we can think of on tonight's episode of the World Famous White Roof Radio. First thing I want to guide you guys to is if you'd be so kind, we have a new sponsor this month, uh, ad only, and they're going to be on the show next week, or next time we do a show this month, but there's an ad over at whiteroofradio.com. If you could be so kind, go over there, check it out, click the ad. It's for uh, HID lights, and there's even a coupon code. It's right there on the ad. Just go through over there, click on it, check it out. If you like any of the stuff, make sure you purchase it, make sure you use the coupon code, and make sure, you know, you get a chance to mention that you know thanks for supporting what you're afraid of you'll hear more about them next episode but for right now i want to remind you guys about our friends over at outmotoring outmotoring.com we love outmotoring.com because they're awesome you know why outmotoring.com is awesome i'm gonna tell you if you guys first of all you need to get the emails if you don't get the emails you're really missing out because if you didn't get the emails for march then you missed out on uh, a ten extra ten dollar savings because you weren't getting the emails. An extra ten bucks, you missed out because you're not getting the emails. So do that first. If you're not signed up to get the outmotoring.com emails, click over to outmotoring.com. Get yourself signed up. Signed up. Then you'll get the emails, and then when you get the emails, you're going to find out. You're going to find things like lower UPS shipping rates. Right? That's pretty cool. Still doing free ground shipping on most orders over one hundred ninety five dollars. Um, you get a five percent discount code in the email. That works. All the time, every time, as much as you want. It's like being part of a secret club. Um, new parts, hundreds of new parts each month, thousands 
of OEM repair and replacement parts added each month. And not not only that, but a growing line, which is still funny, a growing line of Aston Martin parts. Mm-hmm. You know, for those of you out there who are driving Aston Martins. I know Alex has one. He just won't tell us about it. <laughs> um, so, so since they've started doing this, I see, I see Aston Martins like everywhere I go. Do you really know? Or maybe it's just San Francisco. I don't know. <laughs> Probably just in San Francisco. Uh, a couple things I would like to point your attention at um, is I'd like you to go, when well, you're driving your Mini right now, I want you to look down at the shift knob. Does it look gross and gnarly and you actually can't read it anymore? Yeah. You know who's got replacements? On motoring.com. They're the OEM replacements too. And they look sharp and look make it look nice again. And that's an easy mod and they're not that expensive. Uh, and you want to put blackjack anything on your car? Aaron's got you hooked up with the blackjack for everything, all of it. Just go over there, all the blackjack stuff. Not only that, but you know the the mini laptop cases, pouches, luggage, and then all the other things for your personal your your person. You know it's uh, event season, right? The dragons coming up, Ambit's coming up, Minis of the Mountains coming up. You want to look like you belong. Go over to motoring.com for all the hats, the shoes, the shirts, uh, watches, all the other personal gear. Not to mention a full line of car care products, so you can get your mini looking. Car show, cars and coffee ready. Got it? Got it. Perfect. Go. Outmotoring.com. Please go over there and check it out. Don't forget when you place an order, make sure you say thanks for supporting White Roof Radio. We always appreciate that. And so do they. They, this time around, of course, it's outmotoring.com. Mini performance, speed, and uh, 12 millimeter wheel spacers. That's outmotoring.com. All the wheel spacers, actually. Doesn't matter which size you need. He's got them all. Go check I had out. some of those. I had twelve and a half millimeter on my front, and I just upgraded to twenty. Really? Well, it's it was a, a series of horse trading that went on because some of these wheels didn't fit. I'm like, sure. Oh, nice. So wow. you have wheels on your car now that, or that are that I've got stance. <laughs> yeah, you do twenty in the front top. Yeah, that's, um, that's a huge gap, dude. That's uh, actually. Actually, the way they are now, there's 20s in the back. There's 15s in the front and 20 in the oh, back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. 15 in the front, 20 in the back. Yes, and there's yes, no I'm, rub. You have some tuck going on there, brother? What's going on? There's Yes, there's no rubbing. So. No, and no rubbing. Okay, very cool. That's what the wheel spaces are for. Supposed to help with that. Uh, Aaron's got a uh, full line of those over at Motoring. At Motoring.com, go check them out. <laughs> you got to do it, man. When you, when, you drop your, when you drop the F cars, if you don't put space those wheels out, it looks really bad yeah it looks really it looks bad looks silly and and then i realize now it's like ooh, that is fat i mean it, it looks good <laughs> yeah that's fat with a phat yes dude yes. you're old nobody says that anymore sure they do you just did oh they're, oh my bad all right hey. let's move <laughs> let's get this party started I'll, I'll throw some news music in here now that i've just moved my hat sideways <laughs> let's go <laughs> oh about that. Hang on, hang on, Chad. Fire. Hang, on, hang on a second. Yeah, just you just a minute, please. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, wait. Oh. Okay. My hat's on sideways now too. Nice. Oh wait. Now I can't put my headphones on my head. Uh, I'll go backwards. It's close enough. I don't know. DB's got a midlife crisis car now. I have a midlife crisis car. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> We're going to come back to that. I want to start actually before uh, Brian's brain lose it because he's getting old. I want Brian to actually start <laughs> with his uh, crash course in electric countryman for us. Go. Plug, in, plug Go. in hybrid electric. Plug in which, hybrid electric vehicle, PHEV. Yeah. Is that correct, Brian? Yes. That is the PHEV or PHEV as, as a lot of us in, many, in, in our mini land is calling it. Uh, yeah, plug in hybrid electric vehicle. Um, for those who have uh, not really played the hybrid game before, there are three designations for hybrids. Uh, micro, mid, and or mild, excuse me, and full. Uh, the PHEV, the new Countryman PHEV, falls into the full category. That means that it uh, it can generate 15 kilowatt greater than 15 kilowatts or or more than 100 volts. Okay. So anyway, some numbers that we just kind of got now we actually have a weight on this car. We actually know some decent specs. It will be uh, sadly the heaviest mini that we've ever seen at almost 4,000 pounds. Yikes! And um, but we've got a smaller gas tank. So the 16.1, which is in the normal Countryman now, the new F60s. And in the PHEVs, we'll have a nine and a half gallon tank. Holy and cow! The reason for that is because we've got batteries in there now, so we're going to have a little bit less space to uh, to have a big gas tank. Oh, right. Um, that gas tank also will be uh, pressurized, um, and it does sit next to the battery 
set, uh, battery area, which is underneath the back seats. So, Brian, wait a second. Are you telling me yeah. that the new Countryman is uh, just a Hindenburg accident waiting to happen? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, DB, not really. Um, oh, okay, good. You know, like I said, like you said, and, and I've said, is that uh, we've uh, I've been digging through these tech docs. There's um, a total of around 550 pages worth of stuff about this PHEV. Holy so cow! One piece just about the batteries and and the battery system alone. Wow! Um, and this system is incredibly, incredibly uh, advanced, even more so than what's in the i3 and the i8. Um, so you know, um, once we start, to, you know, start to see this stuff. But this thing is these battery cells. There are 80 battery cells in there they are um uh in a completely sealed system that uh has its own um refrigeration unit basically built into it too to keep those batteries nice and cool that also um is built into the front in the motor in the main combustion motor up front okay so it kind of has its like own it room basically uh the other thing is that uh this the B thirty eight motor, which is this one is being designated, uh, which is the three cylinder motor, is um, definitely not the same three cylinder that we've seen before. It's got some major enhancements. So uh, we're seeing a, a, a starter slash generator that's being built to the front. Um, hang on a second here. I gotta <laughs> kill my slack because <laughs> I think everybody crazy right now. <laughs> And it's driving me crazy. I'm like, like, who, dude, dude, you're slack. Like, not, like, not me, not me, not me. Must be Where's Brian. the woodpecker? It was me. It was Do me. we want to tell people what happened? <laughs> so That's what that joke. popping sound is. It's the slack notification sound, guys. Yeah. And so we are just trying to figure out who it was. And, and then we just started hammering Brian. And It's the way we communicate cool. behind the scenes. Um, you know, what, what we talk to each other while we're doing the show. Right. <laughs> Without actually talking to each other. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty anyway. Funny. So anyway, Brian, continue. Please continue, anyway, Brian. Sorry. Uh, so cool beef, batteries. Yeah, so a beefed up starter slash generator, which is built into the front motor, um, right. along with uh, an extra condenser for air conditioner. Um, we have a six speed auto and not the eight speed auto that we've seen in, in uh, some of our other. That's countries. a really interesting choice. Um, you know, some of the things that are not going to be in the car, obviously, we're not going to be able to have a spare tire. Right. Uh, uh, in the Countryman's. In the other models of countrymen's, you are able to move the back seats forward and back. You cannot do that in the PF. Oh, um, you won't have sports suspension in this car either, uh, or the ability to have sports suspension. Um, and then Is you that, can't add. I wonder why. Maybe because of the extra weight, because of the batteries. Yeah, and because of just how everything is being built out. Got the car it. is super balanced with where the batteries are and where the motor is for the back. Okay. So, so so far we know it's going to have batteries. It's not going to be as configurable once you have the car as the petrol-powered one. It has a smaller fuel tank, but I'm presuming, too, that it's going to get much better MPG because yeah. of the electric motor. <clears throat> well, it's going to be um, – what we've got is a, a new system called the E-Boost. Uh, and how that works is that it's – you know, the primary motor is going to be your combustion motor. But when you go to accelerate, you know, to a point where you need more boost coming in from it, yeah. the E-Boost is actually going to kick in the electronic motor. So that will be, um, you know, this will be the fastest mini that we've ever seen. Um, fastest and also mini zero to sixty, at least, right? Yeah, right. completely sustainable to the point to where the car is going to pay attention to keep um, regenerative because that generator up front that's also your starter right. is also right. going to maintain the the approximate amount of uh, electrical charge in that in the batteries at, at a constant time. So this thing is constantly thinking all the time. You know that when we start talking about how the complexity of this car, you know, we hope that we're not going to have one failure. It's going to, cause that's literally going to take this car down. But at the same time, you know, you're driving an I3 or an I8, one thing goes down. Obviously that car's going to be dead same, in the water. The same too. thing's going to happen with that, right? Yeah. So we, there's so much technology and it's just, it's almost overwhelming, um, to even, even for my brain to even try to absorb it. Um, for the first time we have a, a locking a, a, an all the time locking um, fuel door where you have to release the fuel door from inside of the car now. Oh, and that's because of the pressurized gas tank because that has to be pressurized all the time. They don't want to have fumes coming around mixing in with electronics that are going to be in the back with the batteries, you know, because then you've got that 
doomsday scenario that we were talking about sure, earlier. Sure, sure, sure. Um, uh, let's see. Some of the other things that were, you know, like we're looking at a little bit different uh, hydraulic fuel pump, too, for the transmission just because of the constant differential and how things are going to be, you know, dragged here and pulled there and, and so forth. So um, I think that, you know, a lot of people are still kind of coming at me and saying, you know, I can't wait for the full electric. I really want to have a full electric. But I think that this really is going to be, you know, a true sustainable car. And I don't, honestly I don't think the price point is going to be too horrible. I want to say that it's going to be right in there with, like, you know, JCW pricing. You know, R- high really? 30s probably as your base. Okay. But there's all this tech's already going to be built into the car. It's already going to have everything in it. You know, there's not really much more you're going to be able to do to it except for maybe change some of the aesthetics on the outside, you know, maybe change wheels or maybe change, you know, any sort of after sales accessories. Cause inside of it, it's already going to have, it's already going to have touchscreen cause it has to, because of, you know, what's being built into the car. And, um, so I'm not going to be able to put a pulley on it then, right? Yeah. No, Todd. <laughs> I mean, no, Chad, no, you won't be able to. Um, and also, you know, with all of this, revolutionary stuff there's all this safety that's built into it too there is uh you know there's a cutoff for the electrical in the back if you have some sort of issue if you get into an accident there's actually a a cable area up underneath the hood where the fire department i mean there's a an actual um you know a sign that says tells the fire department where to cut that cable so that they don't electrocute themselves wow okay um you know so if it there's all these different things that are just completely built into the car that it sure seems like they've been working on this for a, quite a long time hmm. and to be able to adapt it into this. So now, Brian, well, it, it, go it's ahead, the same it. technology they've had in the uh, <clears throat> three series for quite a while now. They've had the three series for a couple of years. So the plug in hybrid version of it, in fact, it's the same engine, um, even as the mini, it's the same three cylinder mini engine that they've used in the uh, uh, BMW three series plug in hybrid. Yeah, and it is true, but now we're talking about an all four. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, Talking about a non connected all four where these two motors have to talk to each other. And if you've got slip going on on different wheels, then it's able to add that all four yeah. component. The BMW, the BMW is X drive also. So, I mean, it's, I don't know if they use a different or the same all wheel drive system. I think, I think it's different on the, on the, uh, but, but those, but the X drive has a connected drive line though, Todd. Yeah, that's true. There's a different. So this doesn't have a connected drive line. So you've got two independent brains basically trying to figure out. Trying to synchronize. Exactly. So there's a lot of that. The one thing, the one, uh, you know, I'll finish up on this point because this kind of blew my mind is on one of the last pages of the main document here is, um, hang on, I'll find it really quick. It talks about navigation. Okay. And because the system is, you know, obviously going to have navigation built into it, when you build your trip, the car calculates what the energy consumption is going to be for both motors, not just the combustion motor, but also for the electrical motor. And it's also taking information that you're giving it to by, you know, you can set whether you want to be smart with your engine consumption, you know, your electrical consumption or whether you don't want to be. So when you add, and I'm going to read this straight out of the dock is that with active route guidance by the navigation system, the route is analyzed in the operation strategy adapted for the topography so it literally is like okay we're going to be driving over a bunch of mountains and stuff so in these areas we're going to go ahead and be smarter with our regenerative we're going to be smarter with our electrical you know to maintain speeds and that kind of stuff so some some pretty smart shit going on here pardon my french no that's all right uh that's cool hey do we have like and i haven't i just haven't studied up yet but do we have like approximate mile per gallon figures for this car yet no, and you know how many it's been lately with miles per gallon figures. Yeah, so. that's true. Just kind of hiding them because I'm I'm guessing with that nine and a half gallon tank, it's got to it's got to still have a pretty decent range. I would think, right? Uh, I would so. hope it still have at least a four hundred mile range. With I would hope so. I would yeah, hope. I mean, okay, cool, Brian. Thanks 16, for thanks sixteen for. gallons in the in the new Countryman. That's a lot. That's a big gas tank, my that friend. Is, that is yeah, big. but the P have only has like uh, it. It, I believe, is only six gallons or something. Yeah, as Brian said, he said it was nine. Nine and a half mm-hmm. gallons, yeah, it's for the PHEV. But, I mean, the the you know the other countrymen's, I mean, 16 and a half gallons, that's a big tank for a Mini. Well, yeah. and, you know, nine and a half gallons in a Mini, in Mini terms, actually means 13. 
So get right. this. Uh, I had uh, somebody send me their new countryman, um, brand new countryman Cooper S. All four. And yeah. They were getting. I sent you guys the the picture over there in Slack. They were getting thirty four miles to the gallon. Now wow. that was that was some highway miles, but it was over ninety miles. It was like one trip. But you good. figure even you know a sixteen gallon tank at at thirty some miles a gallon. You're talking five hundred miles on a tank. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, impressive. That's- yeah, that's, that's, it's, that's not even out of break-in phase yet. And this is a this is the gasoline, this is the petrol-powered uh, Countryman All Four Cooper S that'll go 500 miles on a tank, and that's an estimated. You know, your mileage may vary, of course, but uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I would have to agree. But how much is it going to cost you to fill that thing up? 16, 16 gallons. Mm, at, yeah, you know, two fifty a gallon depends on where you're 50, at. Fifty bucks. I mean, it's going to cost you fifty bucks. You yeah. know, with going prices right now between forty five and fifty dollars. Yeah, we're two sixty yeah, in Arizona. I find that pretty interesting, Todd. Just that power to weight ratio because this car is, you know, the hev- the heaviest mini. Even not even the PHEV, but just in general, at you know thirty, what thirty six hundred pounds. Right. It's a thousand pounds more than Alex and my JCW and, and mine too. Yeah, so the wow. okay. mileage is better. I mean, is is better. I mean, it seems to be better. I mean, it's just one example, I guess. The, the picture you sent us, but uh, yeah. I can't, I can, I can't get there. Even if I drive like all green, like I, I don't think I can get it thirty four. For for you, you'd have to, to do that, Alex, do. you'd have to get out on the highway. Like yeah, if you were to drive, if you were to drive to Sacramento, you could get that kind of mileage in green mode. I but you got to get up on the highway. I get so hey, so Todd, um, Alex, you don't have the after sale. You don't have the pro exhaust on your car, do you? I don't. I don't no. Okay. So Todd, what I found on mine on long trips, like we did a trip to to Portland, and I opened my exhaust in green mode, mm-hmm. and I got better gas mileage because there was no backflow on my exhaust. Oh, so that's I got interesting. Better flow. Free breathing, yes. But yeah. Todd, Todd never uses green mode. Nope. No. I've disabled it. I, I, just, I completely ripped it off of the thing. I took a hammer to it, and it no just, longer even goes into green mode. You took the ring off. Yeah. yeah that's I know. If we, could, <laughs> if we could, like, program our cars to be in sport mode all the time, that would be amazing. You can. You, like, you can. There is, a, there is a way to do it, and the instructions are over at a, a forum I do not like to mention. But, um, oh, that one? They are, yeah, they are really? available. Okay. I'll have to dig into that. Well, yeah, you we'll have to buy a special off. cable to do the... To do well, the- I've done all that. So, I mean, that part of it I've done, but I've never found the code to actually disable or to have it default every time to sport mode. Yes, it does exist. Okay. There you go. I dig. It's a hack. It, it's a black box hack, so, you know, yeah. you're on peril. <laughs> That's all right. I've is it, already is, periled my car. To this Alex, is, is it good for the engine to, start, to actually start in sport mode, or is it a bad thing? Doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. Oh wait, you know what? Sport, There's one other thing I wanted to mention really just, quick. Uh, it's just some throttle mapping. Volkswagen, and you, know, you put Volkswagen. Like you put a GTI in sport mode. It's yeah, right. Mode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is sport awesome. mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. So, so, uh, Brian. So Sunday, I got to play with the JCW Clubman for a little bit too, as well. So I took it to a, a car show, and I had pulled it out in the driveway, started it up, um, was filling it full of uh, you know marketing materials and such, and. You know that sound, Todd, that we hear when that Bluetooth exhaust closes the flap? You know that sort of... I've unplugged mine. So. Yeah, Todd's is, on, oh, okay. Todd's is always open. So anyway, yeah, I know. I heard that on this car. Really? Uh, when it was after it had gone past the warm-up phase. Like, I heard it flap close one side of the exhaust. Weird. And I got underneath it, looked at it, and I couldn't see, you know, the the Bluetooth flap that we that you can see on the Pro exhaust. Yeah. Um, and so it must be somewhere inside of the muffler, but it, I definitely heard it. And when oh. I put my hand over that one exhaust pipe, it was, the flow was less than on the opposite, on the driver's side. Wow. So that's interesting. interesting. So I'm wondering if that's going to be sport, if that's sport mode enabled, like if you click the car in sport mode, like on some of the, I think the BMWs do that if I'm not mistaken. Only, um, only the, the high end ones like an M6. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. And there's still a button to do it, so. Oh, there is. Yeah, yeah. There's still a switch, just like there is on the mini. Okay. So, huh. anyway, I could have been hearing things, but I really, really want to try this car, the JCW Clement. I guess. You should, Alex. You'll you'll like it. There's only they're only going to make like six of them, so you better yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Gabe's going to buy them all and put them in a bunker somewhere in Michigan. 
I'm surprised he doesn't have his yet because last time we talked, which was like a week ago, he said his was at the port. Uh, He might have, and he just hasn't told us. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not that's not a possibility. No, that's true. It's not a possibility. We would have still be 800 photographs everywhere about it. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, all right, very cool, yeah. Brian. Thanks for that information. Right, if you guys you have ever. any questions about the Countryman P, have uh, click back over to uh, whiterefreighter dot com. Leave it on the show notes. Brian will Brian and us will do our best to answer those questions where possible. Not all, not all questions bit, can like, be answered ooh. at this time. Yep, it's going to be a very good dealer in June. Yes, June for June. Uh, so if you want if you want to get in on some electric mini goodness, get over to your dealer and give them your money now. Sure. Right? Right. Moving right. on. I want to do a quick shout out if I can. Can I do a quick shout out? Okay. We have a White Roof Radio listener who runs a, a, a Mini Cooper blog that, and you didn't think nobody still blogs in Mini Cooper land anymore, but this guy's running uh, miniracefan.com and he's keeping track of all of the Mini Cooper race stuff. Cool. It's super cool. I'm going to link this one up in the show notes. He's going to be a new link on the on the site too. Miniracefan.com. So for when you want to just get your fix and you want to know where to watch them, how to watch them, results, um, all the things, links back to White Roof Radio for the uh, Lewis Pericarpi interview. Um, very cool stuff, especially if you're interested at all in the Mini Cooper racing. Go over and check it out. Miniracefan.com. So anyway, I, I just remembered I wanted to mention that. Um... What's next? I bought a mini. Do we care, or do we want to, or do we yes, want to talk we about care. charts? Do we, yes, care? we care? I don't know. I, I don't know. I, don't I, th- know. Th- I think we care because this is like your first S. This, no, it's yeah. not my first. It's my second. Second S because his first yeah. car was an S. That's right. Yeah, his but first... you had that car for like five minutes. I had that that car for <laughs> in the in the time span that we've owned minis. Yes, I had that car for five minutes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, this is my my set my second S. Um, I have recently acquired um, a kite blue, a 2013 kite blue Roadster, uh, a car that started life in New Jersey as a Mini USA mule. So it is fully loaded. This car does not have has all the options except for JCW stuff. And I'm, when I say all the options, it has everything. It has the, the rear fog light. It has front fogs. It has leather, heated seats, nav, mini connected, blah, 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 blah. Comfort HK. access, HK, automatic. Yes, automatic. Suck it. Um, Cold weather pack? <laughs> well, what was Todd, that, Todd? You're getting, you're getting older, you know? You no, it's, it's not that I'm getting older. This is still my daily driver, and I spend Check. the bulk of my time driving at 20 miles an hour. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you one bit. You know, and it's just it's driving me nuts being in a manual. So anyway, uh, I got rid of Bruce. Uh, reason for that, he, I was upside down, really bad. Got a hat, didn't have the greatest loan. This one here, way better loan, nicer car. Obviously, got a screaming deal across the board, and I like it. Like it fine. So, roadster owners, I'm now one of you. It's a so really, it's a really what nice are you going to do to it? Um, nothing. Right now, I got to get used to being in an S again. I got used to having horsepower. First of all, I have to take get out used the run flats. It doesn't have run flats. It's got hand kooks on it. Oh. I think. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome. It, yeah, those are nice uh, performance hand kooks too. Yeah, you have to get yourself some sponsorship stickers. Uh, yeah, Todd, Todd and I already talked about that. There's nowhere really to put stickers on this car. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm not going to do much because I got used to first of all the power of the S. I have to get used to the automatic transmission because obviously I'm still wanting to you know shift. So that's weird. Um, <clears throat> the the sport part is handy, and I'm glad this car doesn't have paddles because I think the paddles are retarded. So no, except for except for for Ryan, paddles, yeah, paddles are awesome. Paddles. Yeah, I kind of like the paddles too. The paddle, so but the paddles on on the roadster are they're wrong. It's not mean? like it's not like the paddles on the F cars because the pedals on the F cars they work the way paddles are supposed to work. On the Roadster and on like the R fifty six cars, it's like one side you have to push up and then the other side you have to push down, and that's not well, right. Well, yeah, it's more like buttons no. than they are like paddles. It, exactly. It's not like the paddles on a Ferrari, yeah. for example, like the <laughs> F car is. Well, you didn't buy a Ferrari. I didn't. <laughs> I, I didn't. I bought a Mini Cooper Roadster, but anyway, because because this not car that has can afford it. This car has the special steering wheel. You guys know what it is. The uh, the Mini. Shoot, yours. Mini yours. Yeah, the mini yours steering wheel, which is super nice in white. That's cool. Pepper yeah. white trim. Uh, I snagged the the floor mats out of Bruce because they were the white pinstripe, so it looks like they belong. It's really nice. This car is amazingly nice. There's uh, pictures. In fact, that'll be this week's show image. It'll be a really nice picture of my car, the new mini. As as of now, not sexed or named. So back off. 
<laughs> uh, did you already watch it? Did you already tell it? Like, uh, like, no, like, that's going to be this weekend as it does need uh, – There's because – so somebody asked what I'm going to do to it. So Todd and I have already been talking because this car has all the chrome. Oh, it all the chrome. Is. Oh my gosh, it's got so much chrome. So this car has. Well, you can buy all of the uh, trim in gloss black. It looks great. Yeah, that's what Todd is going to do for me in Vegas. So this car has chrome, all the things, even chrome mirror caps, is, and it's making me a little bit nutty. But I mean, it looks <laughs> nice, but it has black wheels. So tie that all together. We'll do chrome, black mirror yeah. caps, uh, and black headlight rings, all the things. It'll be really bitching. Um, well, so, that was the first thing I noticed when you sent us the picture was the blinding flash reflection <laughs> oh, of the sun, whatever <laughs> that was off the, you know, Mars from the mirror caps. I was like, whoa, bro. Hey, I called out what was shiny out there. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Brian made, uh, Brian made sure to point out to the fact that I'm losing my hair at a rapid pace. Uh, yeah, but this car has, dude, you're not losing. It's lost. <laughs> well, yeah, this, lost. Is, this is true. This is true. Sorry. I love you, man, but it's gone. No, I know. I can't talk about those things. Sorry. Yeah. I love you too. Man, sorry. Yeah. No, sorry. It's totally fine. Uh, this car's like brand new, tops in like brand new condition. The paint doesn't even have any chips in it. I have no idea how this car has been kept this nice for so long, sixty thousand miles. But it's mine, and I'm happier than a, a pig in you know whatever pigs are in. Who has questions? Let, go. Lettuce and carrots. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And I I can say as a uh, a roadster owner for the last almost year now, I've had it for eleven months. Yep. That it is a glorious vehicle to own. Yeah, it is. It is nice. Uh, you know, you you, you hook up uh, Spotify to the HK and you put on some nice tunes. And with the automatic, it's just like, oh, I'm just gonna go for a cruise. And it's just like, oh, this is completely delightful. Here's one question: Did it come with the uh, the Y cable, the mini Y cable? It did not. Which okay, is, don't, which don't is get okay one. because go ahead. I'll I'll get you one. I, we've got thousands of them here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Get the one that's uh, all good use for everything now. Yeah, you could do you could do the two piece, but you you can't control it with the uh, um, you know unless you have the mini one. It's it's so janky yeah. if you try and you know. You know I, it up I just connected it with Bluetooth and and that's it, really the way you do it. Yeah, and then the steering wheel controls work. I just can't select the playlist in Spotify. I have to do that manually, but otherwise it just works. And it's just like you can I, watch. With the with the uh, with the thing, you can watch videos on your screen. Yeah, and I haven't put the mini connected app on my phone yet, so I have to do that yet. So yeah. that stuff. Oh, works. you're gonna be, you're gonna be sorry. Yeah, I know. I'm, <laughs> I know. That is just full of sadness. The mini connected app. Oh, I'm just gonna say. It. I, I know. It didn't a look. Little, it's a little better, Todd. It's a little better. It's a little better, but in his generation, we had a 2010. Oh no, that, then it's not good. And an yeah, 2010, the mini, the same mini connected that the DB has, and it's just full of sadness. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I'll just use the Bluetooth, and then I'll be good. Um, yeah, you'll be fine. The one thing I haven't been able to do is I haven't been able to use Nav on this car yet because it wants me to enter an access code. Have you uh, guys seen that? Weird. Uh, that's weird. Yeah, that's wrong. I haven't gone through the I haven't gone through the manual yet, but I'm hoping it's in there. No, it's not. You're gonna have to get it from the dealer. I've right. never heard of it. Which no, I, I have I'm no all, idea. Why do I need to enter an access code? Do me if, yeah, we'll talk about this offline. Yeah, we'll Maybe. talk about it offline. Got but it. the cool thing, DB, for you in, in Arizona with your traffic issues yeah. is you should use that every day because the dynamic traffic um, will look at all available routes to yeah. get to your destination, and it will find you the best one, and you can trust it. Yeah. We tested it many for many many years and it works really well yeah i'm, and, I'm excited you're just to give that a, a shot on this yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to get a, to give that a shot as soon as i figure out why it's not starting um yeah but has there, the only thing about this car really that if i had to make any complaints is that it has leather seats and i just think we've Look talked on. about this before i think leather seats in a convertible are dumb but like yeah. i said this was a mini usa test mule of some sort probably a press car if i had to guess um, which uh which leather seats the the, the Lounge leather? No. Yeah. Oh, just the regular. Just the regular leather. The punch. Okay. It's the punch the, it's yeah, the, the punch, punch leather. Black. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's not like they're the crazy baseball glove leather because then I wouldn't complain even a little bit, uh, or the white ones. But those would just be too fan. That'd be too fandango for me. If it gets hot, you can always do some of those. Uh, what are those? Uh, wet acoli. Yeah, the wet, the wet, the wet acoli. The, the sheepskin covers. covers. No, no, no. The wet acoli <laughs> uh, wetsuit. The wetsuit material yeah. covers. I mean, for the most part, I mean, like, just leave your top up, tint the side windows. You know, it's not going to be that hot. Yeah. You know, you put the top down whenever you need to. Yeah. It'd be fine. I'm not. No, the problem. It's it's not that it's that, that they get hot. Is that 
you don't when you're sitting in it and it's hot outside. Yeah, you start to sweat and yeah. there's no yeah. back doesn't breathe and that's what the uncomfortable part is. It's not that it's so warm. It's just that it like there's no I've, breathing I've, going on when you're sitting in it. I've sat in those wet coley seats and I'm like, wow, this is just really weird. The whole seat feels like it's higher than it should be in this weird kind of. Kinda, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just this weird feeling. And hey, what? Todd, I don't know. I, I don't know if you've noticed this in yours. Um, and I just noticed this when I sat in it for basically the first time when I drove it off the lot today is this car has a kind of a high seating position. Like I, I got in and I wanted my seating position to be just a little bit lower. No, you can, you can crank it. No, down. it's down as low as, as low as it'll go, but I still felt like I needed to be a little bit lower. So I think that maybe it's just me because I'm not used to it because of the there extreme, are some, it's the rake nope. of the windshield. There are some cars that the seats just don't go as low as other cars. Ah. Because I, I, what my, I've got an R50 loaner and it just, it doesn't crank down just as much as some of my S's or some of the other customers' That's cars. Weird. Like there's something just wrong with the seat. Oh. It just doesn't quite crank down enough. Huh. And I don't know why. I've never really looked into it because like, I don't have time for that. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I've noticed that there are some cars that they just don't crank down enough. Oh. You'll find the right combination of of tilt, you know, I recommend yes. getting close enough to the close enough to the steering wheel where it's comfortable to drive. Yes. Like I used to drive way too far away from the steering wheel and then after meeting Ron Walton and Oh yeah, you know, I, I'm right up on it now. Uh, Showed us how to do that, and and you realize if you ever watch NASCAR, which oh, those, I don't recommend. No, but but those guys, the but those guys, the steering wheels in their chest. Yeah, they're like their face is like maybe six inches away from the steering wheel. Yeah, and they're holding it, but you have so much better control when your arms are bent and when you've yes. got a good bend to your elbow. Right, and um, it's not as comfortable getting in and out of the car always, but it's you'll get it to the point where you like it. And I think yeah. it's just a combination of like, okay, get it to where, and the fact that there's, you know. If if you get in and out of it with the roof down, it's so awesome. There's oh, yeah. no chance of hitting your head. You just pop. You just hop in. Yeah, exactly. Super simple. You could totally Dukes and Hazard that shit. You oh, just, dude, Hazzard, I'm, I'm just jump right I'm over the door. I'm just waiting for the. I'm waiting <laughs> to get used to this car, so I, I'm just going to Dukes and Hazard right into it. I'll make or sure I get that on hammer, hammer, hammer right dude. over the door. Right over the door. Video, video, or it didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing this car does have that I was kind of shocked uh, with as well is that it has the power top. It doesn't have the manual top. Oh, that's cool. Oh, they only had the manual top the very first year. Oh, oh, is that one? Because yeah. I remember that that JCW that we drove for Mini Takes the States. That one had the manual top. Um, I'm yes, pretty I sure it did. That was the very first. That was the very first Roadster that came out. Oh, that's why. And they didn't have the uh, the uh, power one at the time. Right. And then power became standard. They only did that the first year, and it wasn't even a full year before power became standard. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, but uh, and then of course everybody's favorite trick is hitting the sport button on the Roadster with stock exhaust, and you get that very delightful burble. Yeah, so so yeah. nice. It, it's it's even better than the standard JCW on the F fifty six. I think. I, I just don't I don't know how they did that on the Roadster, and it doesn't sound like that in all the other cars on all the other That's, R cars. Yeah, with the JCW exhaust, which we have on our our Roadster. It is as almost as loud as my F56 the Pro exhaust. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, guys. And it is it is actually so loud that we took a, a road trip a couple of weeks ago, and it was about 30 miles. And on the highway, uh, and it was it was cold. It wasn't warm enough to have the top down. Um, it was annoyingly loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm probably not gonna not gonna do any modifications at uh, no. at this moment in time. Uh, maybe it, maybe I'll get a little nutty and I'll go have Jerry put like a stage four manic tune in it so it spits fire. But then I'll realize that that's just dumb, <laughs> and yeah. I'll and I won't do that either. Yeah, well, save you, you have to take the cat off too. So. Exactly. Yeah. No thanks. Yeah, you, that's a, that's a that's a gorgeous car. You really don't need to do anything to it, you know, other than get rid of the chrome. Yeah. But Black out the chrome, and, and somebody was saying something about it needing stripes. I'm getting stripes from everybody, so <laughs> apparently I have really, to put stripes on this car. It really does, and uh, yeah, we can. I can hook you up, man. Yeah, Todd and I are going to talk about that offline. And uh, I know a guy. Yeah, I, I know a guy, <laughs> and we'll uh, work on that in Vegas. So stay tuned. Um, of course, there'll be a full post over at dbmini.us about this and all of my adventures going forward with this car. Um, and thanks, you guys are freaks for all the likes and stuff on Facebook and Instagram. But thank you very much. Yeah. I, I got a question for you, gentlemen. Um, we were talking in the pre-show about uh, the fact that they are becoming rare. It's difficult to actually find a used one. Do we think this car is uh, 
is reaching, you know, uh, classic status or will reach classic status at some point? The Roadster, I think, might. I think it's always going to be in demand. How's that? Yes. I don't know if it's going to be as classic as, say, a 2006 GP. Right. But um, they are pretty rare uh, otherwise. Yeah. And it's always going to be in demand. Therefore, like I told DB the other day, the, the nice thing is about the Roadster is they're retaining their value way better than your 2009. And that's going to be a topic for another show, by the way, um, yeah. is if you – Click over to dbmini.us, and there's probably the second post now at this point, uh, talking about the value of my mini, the, the R56, and that's the number one reason why I got rid of it. So, but that'll be a topic for another show. Go ahead, Todd. Sorry. Yeah, no, I think you're going to be. I think you're going to hold pretty solid on this uh, with the Roadster. They seem to be holding their values. They've dropped about fifty percent. Let's say a 2013 right now is is dropped about fifty percent, but a lot of other 2013 R56 cars. Have dropped more like sixty to seventy percent. Yeah, mm. exactly. <clears throat> and I would throw coupes into that too. Yeah, well, coupes are pretty rare, also. Yeah. yeah, but coupes aren't selling for the same price as roadsters, yep. and they're and they're. I am not seeing as as I was searching for both coupes and roadsters, and I'm not seeing nearly as many coupes as I am roadsters for sale. No, there aren't that many coupes out there, but I would say that they're probably right in between. You know, as far as how hardtops have dropped so much, and so they're kind of in between that and where the roadster right. is right now. Yeah. Yep. I think you have to be kind of a special kind of crazy to actually go for the coupe and commit um, because I think a lot of people get in the coupe or, or they get in the roadster with the top up either way. And I personally, I like it, but because it is, it's small on the inside and it's, it does feel claustrophobic compared to most of yeah, yeah, the it's, coupe super claustrophobic, but I like it cause it's that kind of that escape hatch feeling. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, this is my cocoon. I'm safe here. I'm. It's quiet. I have my music. Everybody's leaving me alone. I've got dark tint on my windows, whatever. And it's like yeah. a little hiding space. So for that reason, I like it, but I can understand how a lot of people wouldn't, which is why I think the the Coupe and Roadster actually didn't sell as well as they could, besides the fact that they only have two seats. Yeah. yeah. It's an exceptional track car because it's so stiff because it doesn't have any sort of – Yeah, except you know what? On the track, I have to put the top up. No, no, I'm at, I'm at the coop, not, not the roaster. I'm gonna put my put the roaster on the track too. Come on, no. Yeah, you will. Yeah, but you I will. gotta it drive. On, it depends on the track. I've seen some that allow you because you get the roll bars. I've yeah. seen some that. The guys out here make all the all the convertible cars unless you actually have like a, a full roll cage, right? The top up, yeah. which is just dumb. But whatever. Okay, track guy. It's fine. You're not looking behind you. You don't worry about visibility. So uh, yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Because I'm going faster than everybody else. But I like it a lot. If you guys have questions about that car, leave us in the show notes. Cool. Very cool. Uh, There was one other thing we were going to talk about tonight. We were going to talk about, what was it, Top Gear? Top Gear. Top Gear. Exactly. Who has, I know it's just Alex and I have seen the new Top Gear. The Top Gear UK, not, um, not, uh, not the Top Gear US, which has been... Is now off the air, apparently, and well, those guys is, are going to move to YouTube or something. They're bringing it back, yeah, oh, but not it, with the same guys. They they fired all the yeah. The they guys. fired they fired Rutledge and all the other guys. They fired them, and they moved on. And the new Top Gear has Joey and then the Rorys or whoever those guys are, and then Chris, we still have the Grand Tour now. And Chris Harris, come on, Chris Harris, Chris Harris, Chris Chris Harris, Harris. is amazing. Yeah, Chris Harris is amazing, um, and I really think Matt LeBlanc is doing a great job. He's a car guy. I think he was always good. He was just a little stiff the first season. Yeah, I think. Yeah, but I think the fact that there was the other dude, uh, for Chris Evans, what's his name? Yeah, um, Chris Evans. I hated was, him. Yeah, was inhibiting him in some ways, and and it's funny. Like I was, I was looking at the latest episode this weekend, uh, and so it's it's with the uh, Bugatti Chi- Chiron. Yes, I hope I'm pronouncing it well. Um, and and it's funny, like I was watching it was towards the end, like the second part of the of the show. And at that point, for some weird reason I realized, okay, this like now they just nailed it compared to last year. And this is this is like the new Top Gear generation has started. Because when you look at, at the guys from the Grand Tour and, and as much as I love them, like they are starting to be out of sync with the audience, right? Like it's a bunch of, you know, white all dudes that are all like multimillionaire and that are driving, you know, I mean, super cool car and they are as fun as they, as they used to be. But it's just that, um, I think this new Top Gear team, like, is going to catch up 
like in an industry in, in an interesting way. Yeah, like I can't wait to see more episodes of it. Like I, I will not like watch more Top Gear than like the Grand Tour, vice versa. But I'm glad like there is like there's gonna be like a good, uh, saying you know competition between the two shows. I also don't think past the three season that Amazon has paid for. Those guys will stop. I think after that. I think oh, this is I'm, the last three years that we see them on on TV. I'm fairly certain of that as well. And and even if not, uh, I think that if they were to continue to do the Grand Tour the way this last season was, that Amazon wouldn't renew it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah I, would agree. I, I don't think it's there's a lot of there's. I mean, the film the film pieces for the for the Grand Tour are brilliant. They're they're old school Top Gear. It's those three guys doing what those three guys do best. But then they move it into the studio. And the new studio pieces just are horrible. You it's know, the, the whole. Oh, yeah. The, it seems um, it seems a bit forced. Yeah, when it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, super too forced, much. and that whole killing of celebrity thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, <sighs> stop making fun of Top Gear at this point. Like this, you're not gonna do this for many seasons. It, it's, yeah. it feels like, as Brian said, like it feels like they're trying to cram like a lot in the studio part of the portion of the show. Yeah. When you're looking at Top Gear. They're doing way less things than than like they are ha- having that. They invite the, the celebrity, they talk about it for five minutes, and then they move on to something else outside of the studio, and then they come back to the you know to the track uh, to the track time of the of the celebrity, and that's it. Like that's pretty much it. Like they don't do news, they don't do anything like this, yeah. and and it's nice because I it, at the same time also I feel I feel like they are not ready to do more. Uh, live stuff, I, I I feel like, but uh, there's there's a good balance in the new Top Gear, and I like it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, it's I, whole I philosophy of less is more, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, Todd, Todd or Chad, have you guys seen the new Top Gear yet? Have I have not. It's in uh, it's on BBC America, I believe, and other you know internet places. Oh, yeah, we've got a, we've got it on demand on the on our Google Fiber. So. Yeah, and and I've yeah, I'll have to. Uh, I have to find out where it's at because we don't have internet. Well, we got internet here, but no cable, so I got to kind of find it on the internet somewhere. You know? uh, yeah, um, there's a one of our favorite message boards. I think still links it up. I'll check for you, Chad, and send you a link. But um, one of the nice things with Top Gear now too is it's the same show in the UK as it is in the United States. Which is, that's good. Well, so it's, it's an hour long. So yeah. yeah. It's not- they don't edit anymore. Yeah, exactly. And they don't change the music anymore because they get the music that they use music that's licensed both in the UK and in the United States. So it doesn't sound weird, you know, because they have to dub in new music for the United States show because they can't use the music that's in the original UK version. So anyway, it's a, uh, I don't know. I like it. I think they're doing a great job or like up to uh, five episodes so far. So you should definitely check cool. it out. It's on BBC America. Cool. Nice. Nice. What else? Anybody? Did you um, did you see those pictures that George had posted there, uh, DB, on him riding at Coda? Yeah, dude, that's this isn't the bike show. No, but it's still cool. It's still racing. Yes, yeah, so our our man, our man Circuit George, America, our so. man, our man George Sue rode his bicycle Sorry, on Circuit of the Americas. Problem. That was it was dope. But that's the bike it's show, like Brian. Motor bike or regular bike? Like I'm no no no, no, no uh, bicycle. bicycle. Rode his bicycle, bicycle on Circus. The Circuit of the Americas is opening up on Tuesday nights for the next like ten weeks. And if you want, you can take your bicycle there, ten bucks, and you can ride it on the track for two and a half hours. That's <laughs> pretty cool. That is and George cool. is from like Austin or George, something. George he George lives in Austin, yeah. So I, we talked about that this last week on um, Ride Bikes I Radio. Saw. Go check it out, ridebikesradio.com. Brian, thanks for reminding me about Ride Bikes Radio. Go Very check well. it out. I was gonna do something else. What was it? No. I don't know. Um, we made the whole talk- show without talking about sales, which is good. You gonna talk about numbers or no? I, w- I was just gonna say, do we want to talk about sales? I know Alex is like, oh, please, can we not talk about sales? Please, can we not talk about sales? Please, can we not talk about sales? But, but they, were, sales. They, were bad. they weren't bad for March. They weren't. Meh. They weren't. So I mean, four point seven percent. Isn't the entire like US market down like this month? What's that? Brands. Isn't the entire U.S. market down this month? Yes. Brands. I think I was browsing my uh, SS, uh, RSS reader, and uh, there was a uh, an end headline from the New York Times saying that the uh, sales for the car U.S. cars in the U.S. are tumbling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. And then Jalopnik just did an article about it and went, "We're heading for a giant crisis." Like somebody wrote an article, and I don't think that's so much accurate, but it was on Jalopnik today, which would have been April the fifth. Right. Yeah. So go 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 track that down. I think there's a lot of opinions on what's going on. I don't think we really know. But I was having a discussion with one of the techs at my dealer 
um, this is just about cars in general, and that a lot of people, you see cars drive, you know, people are driving now 8, 9, 10-year-old cars right. and have no desire to upgrade because they're actually making them better. You know, you can get away with, with having a 10-year-old car. This and, is true. And depend yep. on it still. And so other than technology, and we've, we've seriously, unless you go with high-end cars, it's been just until the last year where technology has been a draw of, you know, say, Apple CarPlay or Android mm-hmm. Auto or, or whatever it is you want to put in your car. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really only been within the last year that that's been a possibility of going, oh, hey, well, maybe there's a reason to upgrade technology. Right, right. But for the most part, what's the reason to upgrade if you have a decent car that runs well? You know, it's paid for. Good gas mileage. Good, yeah, decent gas mileage still. You know. It's, 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 like a great improvement in gas mileage over the last five years, ten years. I, I, I don't feel like it. Well, it's Does, not going to get any better because our illustrious president just... Um, He's getting rid of the standards that that, that have to increase by by law. So, right. you know, we'll we'll get rid of that. So, gas mileage is not going to get any better unless the customers start demanding it. And I yeah. think that's where consumers take over from that point of saying, "Hey, no, I want a car that gets decent gas mileage. It doesn't have to get sixty miles to the gallon." But I, I do think electrics and plug-in hybrids are going to start taking over. Yeah, and uh, to to that point, uh, one of the headlines in those uh, sales, uh, you know, release uh, was the fact that Tesla passed Ford in market cap. Uh, yeah, I saw this, that. Uh, crazy. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, not only that, Alex, but BMW as a brand says they want to um, double the number of electrics and plug-in hybrids uh, alternative, you know, uh, fuel vehicles, if you will, uh, this year. Yep. Yeah. So and and Mini is going to be part of that. And w- when you think about it, BMW as a company, the the Mini plug-in hybrid countryman is going to be part of those numbers yeah, of yeah. trying to double their sales from last year, the number of electric and, and plug-in hybrids that they sold. I think it's probably going to happen just because like O'Brien's really excited about the technology. I think once people see it and drive it and get to experience it, they're going to go, "Hey, this kind of makes sense." Yeah. So what do you let me ask you guys, what do you think is the possibility, I don't know whether we've talked too much about the LCI, but the maybe seeing another plug-in hybrid during the LCI? In uh, some- I, I don't think so. I think it's got to prove itself in the in the Countryman first, which the yeah. country is supposedly in, supposedly going to be the best uh, selling Mini, um, yeah. supposedly. But I, what I think is interesting about last month's numbers, anyway, is that the Clubman dropped so much, and the hardtop's making a giant comeback. Yeah, you know, uh, as far as the numbers went, the, it seems like the hardtop has now regained, you know, its status of wow, this is the king of the hill for minis. Um, I think it's going to be a juggling match between the three. I kind of predicted that the hardtop was going to fall back to less than ten percent this year, and I did the quick math. The uh, Sales last month in March in the U.S. reported sales, 60% of the cars were Ford. And it used to be upwards of 70. Right. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, the hardtops made a big comeback. Clubman's dropped off a bit. Countrymen's were still brand new. People weren't, you know, getting there yet. But, man, they're selling the crap out of them. You know, I, you know, I, I want to go back to what uh, Todd was saying there just a minute ago with the technology and the and the people that you know they want to have cars that do better you know obviously all of us live in major cities we all think about these cars we're all trying to get good gas mileage but yet performance and tech features and stuff do you think any of those things matter to people that live in the rural cities or completely like way off the grid they, you know, do to, they do to the, the younger generation, Chad. I think we're all over forty here. Um, <laughs> right, but I'm I'm talking like the, the mountains of Tennessee or somewhere out in the backwoods of, of mm. Pennsylvania or you know New have- Jersey. So they're not necessarily thinking, going, "Well, I don't need a car that can do all of that," or no. you know, like, or they're trying to make that car that they bought in 1989 last until 2025. They're just you know, pouring all that stuff. I, I think there's a bigger segment of people that are really trying to make those old cars last as long as they can because that's all they have and they can't afford even a 2003 Mini that, like, 
wasn't you know it was technologically advanced for that time but not necessarily where we're at now i still think there's a large population of people that are, they don't they they can't afford anything past that and it, i'm wondering if you know the new car segment is missing that segment of people that be like look here's the chevy aveo that like you know it's a twelve thousand dollar car but it's it's just there you know it's and it's all you can afford, but it's, it'll keep you safe and give you good gas mileage. You know, right. if you listen to all the car pundits out there, they're the ones who are saying within five to ten years it's all going to be automated, which I don't think is going to happen. I, I don't think that'll happen that quick either. I don't, really. I don't think it's possible to to happen that quickly. Um, even BMW as a brand says they want to have fully automated cars by twenty twenty one. In all reality, you know, when you when you really think about that, be like, okay. If I sit on Google Maps and I try to go to Street View and look at all of the U.S., Google Maps hasn't even mapped all of the U.S. yet. Pretty damn close, but yeah. Well, yeah, but there's actually, if you really look at it, there's a lot that is actually missing or incorrect or whatever. And obviously, streets change all the time. But could you really have an automated car that could navigate all of that, but we haven't even really Street Viewed every aspect of the u.s yet it's kind of it it's weird to think about all of that you know when you There's really a lot of hurdles the to big open. picture yeah it, it won't be everywhere there will be some automated cars in five to ten years but they won't be prevalent and i'm not sure it was interesting because i listened to the, the mac guys talk on podcast and john syracuse was the one who said it's probably not even going to happen in our lifetime right you know his attitude whether you you know take him for what it is but he's a tech guy okay he's not it, a car it, guy. Could, it could happen in our lifetime i i see that happening well, Syracuse yeah. is kind of a kind of a car guy, kind of. Yeah, kind of. But, so. but for the most part, he talks about tech. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I think yeah. what we mean by by autom- uh, autonomous car, uh, the definition of it is going to obviously vary over time. Uh, right. I I, I also think that there's going to be uh, like there's so many things like you know one of the articles that I showed you guys this week. There's so many things that we're not thinking about just just uh, just in the cities, right? Like how party going to have to uh, you know, they're probably going to have like to reorganize like entire city because of this. Uh, yeah, what about parking spaces? What about the regulations? What about you know the mix of self-driving cars and and regular cars? All of those things and 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 I think you yeah. know bringing self-driving cars in very uh, low density uh, population areas is going to be the least of of the priorities. I mean, it's going to be mostly. Uh, focus obviously on the on the cities first, and then it's going to grow and grow and grow. What we're going to see though uh, across country, you know, maybe as as soon as we start seeing cars in cities, are trucks trucks driving across country like by themselves. We got those, them now. Those yeah, those ro- those uh, routes are actually all mapped out, and 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 I mean, I think pretty much all routes are mapped out in the U.S. But as far as street view is concerned, J- Chad was saying maybe some uh, other areas n- not so much. But um, yeah, those we're gonna see like super fast because there's like so much efficiencies that can be gained off of that, um, and not even talking about like killings on the roads and, and all that stuff. I mean, it's 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 really exciting. That's a great that's a great exciting time, and and what we're seeing also is one of those articles that came out. It's funny they all came out during sales announcements, uh, uh, saying that you know uh, legacy car manufacturers are, are far from. Uh, losing the battle. In fact, they're actually they're right. actually top of the stuff, and that's super exciting because that's create that creates very uh, you know good and sane competition in the space, and that benefits you know the the customer uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, it it really does, and it'll be interesting. It, it basically Silicon Valley is battling Detroit, if you will, and I use Detroit yeah. air quotes, the car yeah. to see who's going to get there first. And right now, it seems like everybody thought that you know Silicon Valley was going to get there, but no. Detroit really has the upper hand in it because they've been making cars and they understand cars for so long. And they're stealing all of the, the great minds from Silicon Valley to work with them because, you know, you want to work with an unknown company, or you want to work with Ford or GM, you know, to do this with the backing that kind of is. Um, I don't know. And, and how that basically bringing this full circle back around to Mini to see what what is this going to do to sales is the technological advancements um, going to bring people in to, to buy more cars, is it going to be incentive enough to say, hey, my 10-year-old car, my 15-year-old car, isn't cutting it anymore. I need this new thing. 
mm-hmm. whether it's safety features or technology features or comfort features, whatever it is, is that going to be enough? And I think we are on the precipice of that, of, of trying to find out, are people going to continue to buy cars or drive older ones? Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. We shall see. Interesting things to think about. What are you guys doing? That's what I'm going to know. Um, you guys thinking about buying a new car? You guys thinking about getting a pre-owned? Because pre-owned CPOs, sales are up. I know a lot mm-hmm. of people are buying those. Is that what you guys are going to do? You guys are just going to knuckle down and get an F56? You're going to wait for the LCI because you just don't like the way the F56 looks? Comments are open. com. Let us know. And I think there's a lot of people like myself, I mean, for my business. I mean, minis are my business. Yeah. I'm probably going to be a lease guy from now on. Is like I'll be upgrading every two to three years just for business reasons to stay relevant. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. and I think there are a lot of people who are car people also. I mean, even before I was doing it for business, I would upgrade my car every three to four years. Right. Just because I like new cars. And I think there's enough people out there that have the money to do that. Problem is now it's very expensive. DB, you know, you just bought a car. It's yeah. not cheap. No. And I got to tell you this, on new cars, it's not uncommon to see people go in and get a 72-month loan. 72-month loan yeah. on a new car um, it's not, it's, it's becoming common and that's really, you have to, to be able to afford a 60 or $70,000 car. You know, yeah. 40. You know, so your payments aren't a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. I mean, I, I got a good interest yeah. rate on my loan and my loan's roughly 20 grand and i my payments are still going to be with my payments with my insurance, with the uh, extended warranty. My payments are going to be like 350 bucks. See, that's completely affordable. That's, that's where but that was know. on a 72 month loan. Yeah. So to so, so knock that down, I have to pay extra. Yeah. Which I can do, but, but still, it's it's, it's it's become common just because and cars are having to last longer. When you think about it, it's going to take you longer to get through that loan. Yeah. To where you're not upside down in it. Right. So therefore, people are going to keep the car because it's not advantageous to trade it in at eighteen months like it used to be. Mm-hmm. You have yeah. to wait until like thirty six months before you're like, okay, I'm even. I'm not. It's not going to cost me anything to trade this in. I'm not going to have to roll anything into a new loan. Right. There's a lot of complexities here that it's it's multifaceted on so many ways. And Alex, that article you sent about how many things are going to change because of technology in cars was it's very fascinating. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, the piece that was so fascinating is, uh, I mean, that was so fascinating that I didn't think about it at all was, um, you know, all the uh, all the money that, um, you know, brands like Coke or M&M's or whatever are making from selling the products in gas stations. And so now, if you if you have automated cars like where people actually don't stop at those places because yeah, yeah. you don't need to stop if you're not driving right. And that, and that was one of the things suggested is nobody's going to smoke anymore. But if people yeah, aren't yeah. stopping gas, that's most gas stations make a lot of money selling cigarettes. Well, that's yep. where ninety percent ninety percent of all cigarettes sold in the United States are sold through gas stations. Right, it's, right. And so if people aren't stopping at gas stations anymore. And I'm talking this is. 10, 15, 20 years from now, but if people are stopping there fewer and fewer times, it's impulse buy. I mean, they're going to be healthier, one, but what's yeah. that going to do to the industry of tobacco, just for this, example? This is amazing. This is, an amaz- this, is, this is going to be so amazing. All those changes are going to be really interesting to watch, um, especially for car, car guys like us. Yep, yeah. it's fascinating. Very much so. Very much so. We shall wait and see what happens. Hey, I'd like to take a minute. I want to remind you guys about one of the other fine sponsors here underneath the white roof. Our friends over at Craven Speed. CravenSpeed.com. I want you to go into the mini section, and I want you to just browse through all the things that Craven Speed offers for your mini. Like the dipstick, if you have a Gen 1 or Gen 2 car, R50, R53, R56, any of those are cars. Uh, this is a dipstick that won't break. It's easy to read. It's easier to put in, easier to take out. It's awesome. The mini, uh, the Gemini phone mount which is awesome. It has the giant clip or a magnet. I want you to check that out. If you're still rocking an R53, and I know you are, and if you haven't upgraded your pulley yet, you're going to get a Craven pulley. Just go over and get it. If you are rocking an R56 and you want the most bitchinish short shifter with the mini shift wheel cover, Craven Speed's got you covered. Are, are you that guy that likes to GoPro all the things? Craven Speed's got you covered on GoPro mounts too. They've got one that mounts in the tow hook spot. They got one that mounts in the headrest arms. Um, go over there, check them out, and they, they give you all the ways to put GoPros on your minis, short of like the suction cup mount, which you have to buy that separate anyway. That plus a whole lot more, including stuff for other brands, and including not only that, but the cold air intake for the F56. So if you've got an F56 and you want a badass cold air intake for it, 
Craven Speed's got you covered. Go over there, check it out. That's our friends over at CravenSpeed.com, uh, one of the OG sponsors here underneath the white roof, MotoringFile.com as well. Um, we really like those guys. You really like those guys, so I want you to go buy their stuff. And then when you do, the really cool trick is when you're actually checking out, make sure you leave a note that says, hey, thanks for supporting White Roof Radio. We really appreciate that. So do they. They, of course, being our friends over at Craven Speed, CravenSpeed.com. Who has anything else? Um, really quickly, guess guess what's on the homepage at Motoring Stripes now. Um, let me <laughs> hang on. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Hang on. Uh, uh, Vegas. 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 No, nope. um, there's a gold coupe. Scroll. Oh, I have to scroll. Um, I was gonna say a boot protector. Stripes. Oh, the Countryman bumper protection strip or the Clubman, Clubman. bumper protection Clubman. strip. The new Clubman. That is our uh, friend um, Henry in Philadelphia. That is nice. his JCW Clubman. And, and look at that, too. That's a JCW Clubman. Yeah. Cool. That, that looks oh, was nice. it? Did you drive it? Did you drive it? No. No, I did not drive it. Did it sound good? I guess. You- yeah, yeah, absolutely. That looks nice. <laughs> so, so does that mean since it's on the homepage at motoringstripes.com, does that mean it's actually it available is. to be ordered? That is. Right so there you, there you go. If you guys need a bumper protection strip for your clubman and you know you do, this is the one you're going to want. That looks Todd, that looks really nice. Yeah, yeah. it looks awesome, Todd. That's that's version 3 um that I did and it's a it's it's really a, a great fit with or without the park distance control and you see his this picture here um you can see what it fits like with the park distance control. Yeah. Uh, it's perfect. You don't have to there's no trimming, nothing. Dude, it's it's just such so a great nice. part. That is really, really nice. So you guys out there who have the new Clubman, you need this. Go over to MotoringStripes.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage. Boom. There it is. Get it ordered. Um, Todd, you still do, you still do the, the, the bumper protection strip for the Countryman as well, right? Yep. Yep. For the, for the old one, for the R60. Yep. Just shipped something last week. See, if you've got an R60 and you want a bumper protection strip, I know you need it for that car. You're definitely going to click over to MotoringStripes.com and get that taken care of. Not only that, but if you want Todd Pearson stripes for your car, because who doesn't, you go to motoringstripes.com, Todd will sell you some stripes, he'll send them to you, you install them, and you go, check me out, I got Todd Pearson stripes on my Mini. Or just come to Amviv, and just, I'll put them on there. Just come to Amviv. Honestly, Vegas, it's the end of May, just come out, we're all going to be there, it's going to be a great time, and Todd will put your stripes on there. And heck, you catch him offline with enough time, he can do something custom for you too. All you got to do is go over to MotoringStripes.com, use the contact form, and say, hey, I want stripes for my Mini installed at Amviv, and he'll start the conversation. Boom, right there. Also, if you want the White Roof Radio Sunroof Delete Kit, you have to use contact form at MotoringStripes.com. That is the MotoringStripes.com hack to get the Sunroof Delete Kit, which is awesome, by the way. If you want, If you live west of the Rockies and south of San Francisco, and you want the air conditioning in your Mini to work in the summertime... You want the White Roof Radio Center of Delete Kit. Trust me. I know. Previous experience. It's because you were dumb enough to get a car with a sunroof to begin with. So, Todd will <laughs> black it out. It's nice. <laughs> That's what I say to all the people here in Michigan that have an inch of water above their carpet. And they're like, but why did it leak? I was like, because you bought the sunroof. Because you bought the sunroof. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The sunroof is nice. The sunroof is nice. I'm not going to lie. The sunroof is nice. But down here in Arizona, Southern California, probably New Mexico, summertime, no, it's not nice. No. You have the largest like sunroof this, ever right? made now, DB. I'm sorry? You have the largest sunroof ever made now. I do. I have the largest sunroof. And I ha- not only do I have the largest sunroof, but I have the mini with the most amount of headroom. Yes, that is it. Have, have you... Have you thought about a personalized plate for that car yet? No, I have not. And that, that goes along with uh, the whole sex and name thing. And I'm not a big fan of personalized plates anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> they cost extra and it's just like, meh, it's okay. And yeah. You always end up cho- cho- choosing something that, is stu- that sounds kind of stupid a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> yes. No, Alex, you're 100% uh, uh, correct. He's like, oh, ev- so this will be awesome. Every single one of my cars has one. Has a personalized plate? I, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, ex- for chat. <laughs> yeah, I, I came up. Uh, I think I can do a version of White Roof Radio on a license plate, and I, if I do anything, it'll be that, like WR yeah, I, Radio or something. And he, I, for, I forgot. But it see, would work. people wouldn't understand that exactly. We would. We would. But right, most people wouldn't understand. So, like for your convertible, you're like Skyroof or you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> Super well, Chad, now I, another Star do- now I have to buy another now I have to buy another domain name. Chrome I Demon. Right. I have a suggestion for you. Wrap the show. I have to pee. <laughs> there's a show. And there's our show, you, Alex. Wow. So it is really, written. There were people that never listened to the show that read, like, <laughs> close the show. I have to pee for the title of the, their first show. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. That so, sounds very attractive. So it is written. So it is done. We are going to be done. I want to remind you guys there is some uh, brand new. Fresh Black Roof Radio hanging out over at the Patreon page. Go over there and check it out. Uh, like a, like a dollar. A dollar gets you in to Black Roof Radio. Every time we record a show, we record the pre-show. Sometimes it's good. Most of the times it's good. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it might not be safe for work. doesn't matter. You get access to it, and you only get access to it at the Patreon page. And that's over at patreon.com forward slash white roof radio. Not only that, but like I sneak you guys out the shows early over there. Uh, we, uh, the, the, the interview with Lewis Park Carpy last week, I snuck that out to the Patreon, the patrons first. You know, that kind of stuff. There will be other perks and things as they come along. All you got to do is go over there and get signed up. Patreon.com forward slash. White Roof Radio. Otherwise, we are done for the night. I do want to remind you about one other, and that's our friend over Chad Miller of Detroit Tune, DetroitTune.com. If you're within the sound of Chad's voice, you should be stopping by that brand spanking new shop that looks amazingly awesome and is going to have a really cool garbage dumpster surround, apparently made out of like unobtainium and gold. Good grief. I know. Holy cow. Well, it has to. Uh, withstand an earthquake and winds. Sure, because I mean, I know Detroit's a huge is earthquake country. Yeah, right, right. Check out, check out Chad's new welder too. Oh yeah, and you check out Ch- Chad's new welder, which that's actually pretty <laughs> bad. <laughs> Welds like butter. Welds like butter. Uh, that's our friend Chad Miller again from Detroit Tune. DetroitTune dot com. Please go over there and check it out. That would be awesome. And like I said, if you're hours, uh, two hours, three hours from Detroit. And you need work done on your mini. It doesn't matter if you just need like regular service. You need uh, a modification. You just don't want to go to your dealer because you're tired of your dealer janking you around. Just give Chad a call. He'll get you an appointment. He'll get you sorted out. First time, done and done. DetroitTune.com. Please, thank you. But now we are done, so we're going to let Todd go pee. So this is the part of the show where I do like to make the funny clicking sound. And then I say, questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and click back over to whiteroofradio.com. There you can leave us a note in the show notes. You can also email us feedback at whiteroofradio.com. Until next week, gang, this is DB. I'm done. Cheers. See ya. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Todd, go. Hurry, go. (laughs) 